Well, welcome to episode eight of Shoreline Conversations. Uh, I'm my name is Cole Lovelace, and I'm excited to be here. I'm talking with Pastor Kevin. We're gonna be talking about spiritual gifts and serving, and it's a uh, it's a fun one. It's a little over an hour. We went a little long, but that's because Kevin really has a a unique perspective on this topic because he studied this topic for many years. So he'll get into that. But you know, without any further delay, let's jump into it. So Kevin, thanks for uh, just being back here with us. Uh, we're excited. I know that we're we're talking about spiritual gifts this yeah. this week, and and this is episode eight. We're we're excited to see where this this uh, conversation takes us. But just to kind of start off, uh, I wanted to just ask you the the basic question of, um, you know, what exactly are spiritual gifts? Because I think for a lot of people who maybe aren't Christians, they they hear spiritual gifts and they hear like a basic definition. It seems a little like um, uh, Avengers, uh, maybe maybe a little super powery. So, uh, yeah, yeah. One, of, one of them is throwing a big, heavy, uh, big, heavy hammer. Oh, good. And having it come back to you. That's what, so yeah. Is that so, yours? Yeah. No, is that no, your spiritual no. gift? No. Um, <laughs> one of my, one of my favorite movies was, um, what was the movie, uh, mystery men? Oh yeah. Yeah. And yeah, one, one of the characters was Mr. Furious. His, his superpower is that he could get really, really <laughs> angry. <laughs> and yeah. so, so I, I would, I, so I would say that spiritual gifts uh, are better than superpowers. Oh, good. Because everyone has them if you're a Christian. And so, you know, the thing about you know shows and movies on superpowers yeah. is a, a very small, select group of people have these superpowers that you don't know where they came from or how they got them. In some right. cases, a, a spider bit them, or they come from another yeah. planet. You know, but yeah. gamma oh, radiation. Oh, back, yeah, gamma yeah, radiation. You thank you. And, and <laughs> uh, but but you go okay, and 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 some of them are unpredictable. Yeah. Uh, but the thing about the spiritual gifts is that when a person becomes a Christian, there is there is something. I'm mysterious about it because they're supernatural. Mm-hmm. It's actually it's it's the 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 Greek term that is uh, charismata, which is gifts of gifts of the spirit or gifts of grace, mm-hmm. and so they're grace to us. And every believer gets one, sometimes more than one. Right. And I think they're more I think they're more powerful or more functional than a lot of the superpowers that you see yeah. in movies because they they change the world, they change people's hearts, people's lives, and uh, it's interesting. I. I spent six years of my life mm-hmm. studying the topic of this week's sermon wow. and um, and this and the, the the couple of texts that we're looking at from Romans and, and from First Corinthians and Ephesians four that talk about spiritual gifts. Talk, it really, it's about every follower of Jesus is called to serve and to pour themselves out in some kind of service according to the gifts that God's given to them. Yeah, and and so I spent six years uh, on my doctoral program basically studying this one concept: how do you build a church? around the gifts of God's people and not the charisma of a pastor. Yeah. How do you build a church around all of God's people doing their part, exercising their gifting, using their superpower, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but, but how do you, um, you know, launch a church and lead a church and grow a church and see a church thrive in a community and in the world where every single person mm-hmm. says, I have something to offer. I have something to do. I can offer my gift of grace. I can offer my service. Mm-hmm. And my, you know, my, Conclusion after six years, and it's and the Bible. It was not a hard conclusion to come to because the Bible is clear about this: <laughs> yeah. that a church, a body of believers, is much healthier and better and more powerful. With if you have a church of eighty-five people, the average church in America is seventy-five to eighty-five people. If you have a church of eighty-five people, where every person knows their their gift, their superpower, their their yeah. spirit-given ability, and uses it for God's glory, every single person, mm-hmm. that church can be powerful. If you have a church with eighty-five people and none of them use their gifts, but they have a pastor who. Mm-hmm just tries to take care of them all and use yeah. gifts for them that you're going to have an exhausted pastor and an ineffective yeah. church. Yeah. And so I, I, this is an important topic to me uh, and I, to preach it to the congregation, to talk about it with you, to share with people yeah. that man, to know your gifting, to use your gifts, to serve in the name of Jesus. There's nothing more powerful and there's nothing more glorious in our own hearts and lives because when you use a gift God's given, and when you serve faithfully and God, and you feel the spirit of God work through you and the world change, a life mm-hmm. change, a person change, you go, man, this is the best. This mm-hmm. is incredible. So uh, I'm excited about this topic. Yeah. Cole. Yeah. It seems like, <laughs> Hey, here's a question. I just kind of, uh, came, came to my head when you're talking, I, I'm wondering, cause you know, I think, I think there's a, there's a difference in like a, a local church and like mm-hmm. a, maybe you would call it like a, a small C church. And then yeah. like the, the global church, the yeah. bride of Christ, the yeah. big C church. Mm-hmm. Is there something to be said about, um, maybe how, like, I think 
I think every church is called to do, you know, we, mm-hmm. we used to talk about that with, with um, every church is called to, to grow believers in yep. discipleship and worship mm-hmm. and, and to reach the lost. Yeah. And, and so I think that there's spiritual gifts that lean to those yeah. different yeah. categories. Um, but man, I, I, I definitely feel like maybe, maybe this is a Western thing, uh, but like some churches kind of have like maybe a bent towards one or two or, mm-hmm. or of those things those things. Is there something to be said about maybe healthy churches, small C mm-hmm. need to have like, um, you know, a robust, uh, I guess, basis for those three like categories. Yeah. Um, but maybe like as a more global church, is there something to be like where churches maybe ha- it's healthy for them to be working with other churches that are mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. stronger in evangelism mm-hmm. yeah. or yeah. to be growing each other. Is that like, yeah. do you see benefits of that? Is that, yeah. I mean, well, I, I love partnership and yeah. I think that, um, so in, in Mon- you know, we, you know, our church is in Monterey, California. Yeah. There's a lot of great churches in this area. I yeah. meet with leaders of a number of the churches in the area. And, uh, and I think anytime we can help other churches, anytime we can partner together, um, I think I think when you think think about spiritual gifts and a local church, you really want to see the whole ver- variety yeah. of different gifts being used. Um, we don't get to choose what gifts we right. we have. Uh, that's that's the work of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And there's some people who are like, man, I wish I had that gift, but it's like, well, no, this is who God's made you. This is how God's called you. So I think that um, I look at in our community here. There's times where we'll see different churches helping other churches mm-hmm. because they have maybe a greater wealth of certain spiritual giftings. Yeah. Um, they have uh, a church that has a real strong worship team and a real strong worship ministry and a, a sense of what's going on there. They, they can help other churches. I loved, uh, Cole, when you led uh, with the leaders of Monterey Church, and it was Monterey Church, Cypress Church, and Shoreline, right? Yes, yeah. Those yeah. three churches, yeah. all Monterey churches, for people, for people that are listening that are, are not from the area here, those are three local churches right in the Monterey area. And we did this evening of worship. It was yeah, during as one, yeah, as one. Yeah, and you can yeah. find you can find that on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. As, you would just put an as yeah, one forward slash. No, okay. I, yeah, but, <laughs> but but no, but it's I, I pro I probably um, I think there's been like a thousand views, and I've done eight hundred of those. No, yeah. uh, but but <laughs> I I I, viewed, I, viewed, I put it just as as in music in my office when I'm working, yeah. and uh, but to see the worship leaders from those different churches, all mm-hmm. three of those churches have great worship teams yeah. and great worship leaders. And you guys are friends yeah. and, and, and support each other. And so to see us gather, and that was during COVID when we did kind of an on, kind of an online worship experience, right? Yeah. That was pretty early on in COVID mm-hmm. and um, in the COVID season, the we COVID call it. season, mid COVID um, season, mid, kind of early mid yeah. COVID season. <laughs> um, but, but uh, we probably, is it, is, it too, is, it, is it too early to joke about COVID? I, mean, no. I don't know. It's, it's a sad thing. It's a terrible thing. But it feels uh, natural. But, but it's like at this time. It's this yeah. time of life, right? Um, but early, mid-COVID season. Finding joy um, in these things. Yeah, wa- watching you guys come together and lead us in worship. And it went online. And people from all the churches were able to be part of it. Mm-hmm. And I think together then we can then offer that as a gift to other churches. And so, um, yeah, I think that there's there's the thing about the spiritual gifting is that it's meant to unify the church. And you're right. Small C church, a local church. But bigger than that, the Church yeah. of Jesus Christ throughout a community, throughout mm-hmm. a nation, throughout the world. And so when churches get the vision, when every believer b- understands, I'm not just a consumer of religious goods. I don't mm-hmm. just come to a church and and drop in you know, some pocket change or a few bucks or write a check or mm-hmm. go online and, and give a big gift. I, you know, it's, I don't just kind of come and pay and consume the goods. I actually, uh, I have something to give. I have something mm-hmm. to offer. Every time I lead a new members class at our church... And I did. I actually did one this last Sunday online. Yeah. And every time I lead a new members class, I say, if you're looking to just come and hang out and receive and get stuff, uh, I, I tell them, don't join the church. Just kind of hang out on the edges. But I say, if you join the church, you're, you're saying, I'm part of this, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna invest my gifts and my ability to make the church a better place. Mm-hmm. And again, if a church of 75 or 750 or 7,500 is filled with people who say, I will use my gifts, I will serve in the name of Jesus, that will be a strong, healthy church. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I'm, I'm hearing too, um, just in your description of that, that there's a big difference between spiritual gifting and, and honing your spiritual gifts versus like spiritual disciplines, mm-hmm. yeah. except maybe evangelism. Right. But, um, I well, mean, well, here's how I would, I would describe it like this. Spiritual disciplines are the things that make us mature as a Christian. Yeah. And the spiritual disciplines are like a recipe. Mm-hmm. You need all of them. For, yeah. You know, if you got to chocolate chip cookie recipe and you don't put chocolate chips in it, you got a problem. You got a, not a chocolate uh, if, chip cookie. Exactly. <laughs> if, if, if you don't, if you forget the sugar, you got a problem. You yeah. got, I really got a problem because yeah. you need the sugar and the chocolate chip and the sugar and the sugar. Yeah. Uh, but, but you, you say, okay, so, so 
to make that cookie, you need a recipe and you put every every mm -hmm. ingredient in there. Uh, the disciplines are all the different ingredients that th those are all, we all pray, we read the scriptures, we have right. times of quiet, we, we have community. There's certain things that are just part of being a Christian. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the uh, but the spiritual gifts are like, more like a menu. Mm -hmm. But the difference with that menu is we don't get to pick what we, we somebody else says, okay, uh, he'll yeah. have that and he'll have, and he'll have that yeah. or she'll have that and she'll have that. Uh, but you don't get everything on the menu, you get certain things. Right. So the giftings are select, but you put them all, to, you know, but in the church you have everything on the menu. Yeah. Uh, but, and, and so, so you know, one of them is something that uh, the disciplines are, are, we should be growing all of those uh, in our lives over mm -hmm. time, but the gifting, somebody may have a gifting of service uh, or a gifting of compassion, and that may be their primary gift for their whole life, right. and they hone it, they develop it, and they use it, and God's glorified through that. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually found that most people have two, you know, kind of like one or two primary gifts, and maybe a secondary gift, and a lot of times those gifts work together, but that's up to God and how God makes us right. and wires us and calls us. Yeah, and the reason I, I'd say, except maybe evangelism, is because I, uh, you know, we're, we're every Christian's given the yeah. Great Commission. Yeah. But I, I do acknowledge that, like, you know, the, the gift of evangelism yeah. is a different, yeah. you know, category. I mean, yeah. I believe that that's yeah. yours. Yeah. It, yeah. My pri my primary yeah. my primary gift is evangelism, and then and then along with that is teaching. Yeah. Uh, I have a, my secondary gift is leadership. Mm -hmm. I like leading, but my real passion is evangelism yeah. and teaching. And so, uh, yeah. So that's. Um, Say what you said before. I was just thinking the, with evangelism, mm -hmm. uh, because it's the Great Commission. Oh, you're, so, yeah, you were talking about yeah, it, that, that everyone... Well, but, I, but I would say something. That in, in a number of the gifts, um, there are things that every Christian does, but some people do it a greater measure. Right. Right? So evangelism. Mm -hmm. Every Christian is called... Uh, Peter says every Christian should be ready to give an account for the hope that's in them. Yeah. That's the hope of Jesus. He says, do it with gentleness and respect. That's uh, 1 Peter 3.15. Mm -hmm. says... Always be prepared to give an account for the hope that's in you. So every Christian should be able to talk about their faith. Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, every Christian is called to be salt and light. We shine the light of Jesus. Yeah. We live a life that makes people thirst for the living water of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So every Christian is to be a witness, is to shine the light of Jesus. But about 3 to 4% of Christians have the gifting of an evangelist and the calling of an evangelist. Yeah. I happen to be one of those people. Mm -hmm. um, and all the gifts are needed. There's none, none are better. They're not like, uh, they're not different levels. They're all yeah. honoring to God. Uh, but I would say this. So I, I look and say, I have the gift of evangelism. I do that more naturally. I do it more often. I train and equip people all over the world yeah. around evangelism. But but you're called to share the light and the love of Jesus yeah. in natural ways. And we call that organic outreach around shoreline. In natural ways, mm -hmm. you share who Jesus is. Um, but but somebody who says, as Christian says, well, I don't have the gift of evangelism, so I don't have to ever talk about Jesus. Yeah. Wrong. But the same is true. There's a spiritual gift of compassion. Mm -hmm. And so I don't Truth have that, love. I don't ha I don't yeah. have that gift, right? My wife does. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, if I told you do I have the gift of compassion, you know me pretty well. You say I'd say you're not, working on it. Okay. You, okay. <laughs> and so, but here's the thing: I, my wife does. Yeah. And she's always reminding me, Kevin, you have to be more sensitive. You have to be more kind. You have to be more gentle. Yeah. More compassionate. Yeah. So I'm learning that. But here's the thing: I can't say. I don't have to be. The, I don't have the gift of compassion. I can just be mean to everybody. I can be a jerk. Right. No. Yeah. Um, I'm a Christian. I'm called. To, I'm called to have sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a spiritual gift of intercessory prayer. Mm -hmm. We all pray, but some people pray a lot more. There's yeah. a gift. There's a gift of generosity. There's mm -hmm. actually a spiritual gift of giving. Yeah. And but we're all called to give. But some people give at a. I remember a, a guy uh, Keith who was an elder at a, a church I served when I was in seminary. And he said to me, he said, yeah, if I tithed, if I gave, if I gave my first 10%, he said, I would be living in total sin. Yeah. And I said, well, how's that? He says, oh, he says, if I'm not giving 40% or more, um, I'm not in God's will because he says, I started tithing years ago, but God has given me so much. And I, but he's a guy who has got the gift of giving. He yeah. says, my starting point is like 40, 50%. Yeah. And I look at the rest and I try to find some ways to give that away too. Not everyone has that gift, right? No. <laughs> but, but, we're, but we're all called, I, I'm looking, telling you by your response, I, that, that may not be your gift. It's not my gift. Um, <laughs> But, but Cole, do you give regularly and faithfully? I do. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and that's, so we all do, we all give, mm -hmm. some have a gifting of giving. We all pray, yeah. some have a gifting of intercession. We all share the love of Jesus in natural ways. Mm -hmm. Some are called as evangelists. And so that's, um, some of the gifts are what it means to be a Christian, but yeah. at an elevated level who people have that gifting live it out in a different right. way. Yeah. You're in, you were kind of, you, you got into my, my next question that I'm, I'm interested in is. You know, I, I feel like it seems like there's a little bit of discussion. Like when you, I mean, when you Google, and this is why I'm asking this, because like you, you Google, you know, list of, of spiritual gifts, uh, 
from the Bible. Yeah. And you'll get, you know, what, what the, your answers you'll get is, uh, you know, what are the seven spiritual gifts? Mm -hmm. What are the 12 spiritual gifts? What are the 23 spiritual gifts? And Do I, I hear 27, 27 <laughs> 28, 29. Yeah, right, yeah. Like, <laughs> so I, I think it's fair to, to ask the question, like, you know, what, what are the spiritual gifts yeah. and, and where, where does, what does the Bible have to say about that? Yeah. Yeah. So for those listening that want to dig in, if you're not driving your car, if you can write this down <laughs> uh, and we don't, I know some, a lot of our podcast yeah. listeners will be driving, so yeah. way, but, but you can come back and pick this up and, and, and get these. But, uh, if you write down these four Bible chapters, uh, first Peter four, mm -hmm. Ephesians four, first Corinthians 12 and Romans 12, first Peter four, Ephesians four, first Corinthians 12, Romans 12. Uh, and we're in Romans 12 in this sermon. Yeah. That's what took us yeah. there. Those four chapters are the biggest and most detailed chapters on the spiritual gifts. Okay. And then surrounding the teaching is, you know, use the gifts in love, use them as a body of Christ. God's bound us together. There's a lot of, you know, kind of how to guide the gifts and use them and unleash them. And you get into 1 Corinthians and it even says, be careful with certain gifts that you don't use them for self-glorification, mm -hmm. that you don't use them in a kind of a wild way that will freak people out. And because some of the gifts are a little bit more, are a little bit more uh, edgy and out there. And they, but they're saying, but they're not meant to, if somebody walks in to go, man, you're you're freaking me out here. They're, they're meant to draw people in and, mm -hmm. and, to, and to unify the body of Christ and to impact the world with the love of Jesus. And so, you know, in answer to the question, how many spiritual gifts are there? I would say this, read, read Ephesians 4, 1 Peter 4, uh, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12. Look at those lists and write mm -hmm. them out. And then I think you, I, I think it's safe to say those aren't the only gifts. Those are the biggest lists. And I think that when we, I love using spiritual gifts tools and there's tools you can use to kind of assess gifts and help people learn what their gifts are and how to develop yeah. them and grow them. I think that's great. Uh, but I'm also very careful um, not to uh, say this is these are the only gifts. And also there's some people will say certain gifts were um, valid and, and um, in effect and being used at a certain time in history. Right. And then when the Bible was completed, and the, the, the formal term is canonized, but when the yeah. Bible, when, when the, the canon of the Bible was closed, there are 66 books. We said, this is the word of God through a whole historical process. That'd be another podcast sometime. Mm -hmm. But but um, if it, once the Bible was canonized, some people said, well, now we don't need certain gifts anymore. And they've ceased. Mm -hmm. Those people are called secessionalists. Yeah. And okay, those certain gifts have ceased. Um, I see nothing in the Bible that seems to me to indicate there's any point where any of the gifts go away. Mm -hmm. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But we do need to use the gifts in a way that edifies, in a way that's done decently in the order the Apostle Paul says in right, 1 Corinthians. Right. After dealing with the gifts and the body of Christ, he gets into guidelines for the gifts in the church just to kind of be, say, you know, we we can we can get to a point where we go well my gift's better than yours so I'm yeah. more spiritual than you don't do that we get to a point where we use the gifts without discernment mm -hmm. or without other people assessing how we're using them to so be careful of that and so um, I don't give a set number but I would say those four passages unfold most clearly right specifically lists of spiritual giftings and then. I, I, you know, but I believe that God is big enough to say I can gift a person in a unique way uh, that is may not be on one of those lists, mm -hmm. but it's how God gives people. Yeah, and I, I, I heard you kind of reference some of the those. Um, you know, I think for a lot of people they would call them more like like um, personality tests or mm -hmm. or uh, things like you know big ones are like Myers Briggs and mm -hmm. uh, Enneagram. Mm -hmm. um, you know, are, are there is there I guess, is there benefit to mm -hmm. like using those together with the spiritual gifts assessment? Is that mm -hmm. uh, like, is it um, maybe distracting? Is it, mm -hmm. I don't know, is that, is that something that like you've done or mm -hmm. do you encourage people to do? Yeah. Is there a benefit? Um, a brief answer would be no. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't think, cause here's the thing. If we try to pair up a personality type and a spiritual gift, then what you, I actually think that almost any personality type mm -hmm. can have almost any of the spiritual gifts, but it'll manifest itself differently. Yeah. So you may have a person, so like the, one of the spiritual gifts is the gift of teaching. Mm -hmm. And if you have people teaching children or youth or adults or preaching, hopefully they have a spiritual gifting of teaching because mm -hmm. that's going to give them, you know, you still can develop the gifts and sharpen them over right. time. But, it, but having the gift obviously gives you this Holy Spirit filling and, um, you know, a, a unique ability that gives you a leg up, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I've, I've met people who are school teachers who don't have the spiritual gift of teaching. And they'll tell you, the last thing I want to do when I'm not teaching is teach more. Yeah. 
They don't want to be, you know, teaching kids in the church or adults in the church. They love to teach, but it's not a spiritual calling for the church. It's something mm-hmm. they use in their professional life. Yeah. That's okay. Um, but you could have a person who has a gift of teaching and they're a very quiet personality. Yeah. They're a very shy personality, but they do a great job teaching God's word one-on-one or in a group of two or three people. Yeah. And their temperament is very reserved and they're not really outgoing, mm-hmm. but they're in their calmness and their gentleness and their wisdom and their teaching gift. They can teach people. Mm-hmm. You have somebody else who's very charismatic in the sense of you know energetic and yeah, uh, engaging yeah. and they're extroverted and they and they've got a gift to teach uh, students high school students and, yeah. and they can keep the attention of junior high kids and senior yeah. high kids and teach with in a dynamic way and they volunteer in the church and and you go well, well now their personality is really outgoing and extra this was more quiet and reserved well teaching you know the gift the teaching gifts can be used across that spectrum mm-hmm. and so uh, i i th- i think it's great to do i think personality assessments yeah. are wonderful i think those are very valuable um i think that there may be ways that that they our personality can inf- inform our gifting but by and large yeah. i think that the better route for a christian is to discover what your gifting is and then say how does that unique gifting work yeah. itself out in line with my how God's made me uniquely in, in my own wiring. Yeah. So yeah. so how does that how does that manifest? And like you know, we we have you know like an actual written um, spiritual gifts assessment here yeah. at Shoreline. Mm-hmm. But you know, taking the time to assess that and, yeah. and look within yourself, uh, what are the benefits of that? Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering what are the benefits of that not only in the way that that we're serving in the church, because mm-hmm. I hear that a lot, mm-hmm. that those are very connected, yep. um, your gifting and then the way that you serve the church, mm-hmm. but also how does, as a Christian, knowing your spiritual gift, and I, I think also being intentional about honing your spiritual gift, yeah. um, how does that benefit you in even just yeah. your day-to-day life? Yeah. So, so you just talked about discovering our gifts and then kind of under, embracing our gifts and then honing our gifts yeah. and using our gifts. And that's, th- those are, and that's a, that's a big question. Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> uh, but no, no, the, but, but, it, but it's, and again, I spent six years studying yeah. this, so yeah, I, yeah. I probably think about this more than, yeah, yeah. I thought about this more than most have. Yeah. Um, but so initially you started by saying there's, there's assessment tools. Right. So we have an assessment tool we use here at Shoreline. And uh, we like people to help help people kind of discover what their gifting is. And mm-hmm. so it's it's usually about, uh, it's a series of questions, and there's a number of questions around each of the gifts. And, and the questions tend to be, one is, have I experienced these kinds of things? So, you know, I've spent a lot of time, you know, extending compassion and care to others. Mm-hmm. And then there's a question around, you know, people... Do people tell you that you are compassionate and you move towards the needs of others? And then there's an aspirational question like, uh, do you desire to help people in times? And if they score yeah. high, levels, well, then you have a gift of caring, a gift of compassion, certain yeah. gifts. So, so the questions are designed to help people identify their gifting. Now, the gifting is given by God. The gifting's in the scriptures. Uh, there's a, kind of a sense of what each one looks like in the life of the church. And the questions is to help people kind of go, oh, that's. My gifting. I remember one time I, I did a spiritual gifts test. I'm going back now 30 years to the first church I served when I was still in. I served in this church when I was in college and seminary and three years out of yeah. seminary. So this is a couple of years ago. <laughs> and uh, this one woman in the church, Twyla, Twyla Wagner, and she uh, she was a neonatal nurse and had offered to help with our we are we had our firstborn uh, child when we were there and our mm-hmm. second our second son was born. We were part of that church. And she, when a neonatal neonatal nurse says, I'll take care of your kid, yeah, we're like, like, we can go have sure. a date. We can yeah. have a date. You know, <laughs> yeah. gonna, we know everything's going to be fine. Um, but she came to this class on spiritual gifts and she um, and she was going to take the, the spiritual gifts test. And she said, you know, I, I've been a Christian almost my whole life since I was a little girl. But I'm I'm pretty sure I don't have any gifts. I just like to to help people and serve <laughs> Jesus. And she meant it, you know, because she. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I looked at her and I thought, you, you're going to score out the roof on compassion. Yeah. And there was a couple a couple of areas, and also she was an incredible prayer. She was like a prayer warrior. Mm. So I thought yeah. intercessory prayer, compassion. She's going to be like, bing out yeah, the roof, right? Yeah. So, but when she did the test and then got the results back, and she and I think it was scored like from one to fifteen, and in like three different areas, she was like a fourteen or a fifteen. She's like, I didn't. I didn't know, but what it, yeah. she was like surprised. But what it did is it allowed her to give a name yeah. to something that was already real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it allowed her to recognize, you know, God has been using me and using this gift mm-hmm. for it. You know, for her, it was so much a part of her. It just felt natural. Yeah. Right. What she didn't realize it was truly supernatural, but she'd lived in that supernatural kind yeah. of living for so long. She was so naturally c- compassionate because God was working in her. She, she was so... 
uh, quick to pray for people and to, you know, to lift things up. And she'd pray, she'd remember for weeks or months or years to keep praying. My, my father-in-law, there's people that I, names of people I shared with him when I was a youth pastor mm -hmm. um, three decades ago, he still prays for some of those people every day. Yeah. That's the intercessory gift, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you have other people, it's like, well, someone asked me yesterday and, I, and they see me a couple days, hey, did you pray for me? You go, I forgot the minute I walked away from you. <laughs> Maybe you don't have that gift. Yeah. Um, or if you do, you have to really develop it yeah. a lot <laughs> because you're, cause it's, yeah. it's, it's not really thriving. Um, but, but, you know, so, so again, a, a, a big question, a tool like that helps people kind of dis discern their gift, figure it out and, and hopefully celebrate it. Mm -hmm. But then there's the process of developing that gift and sharpening it. Mm -hmm. um, I found out pretty early on that I, have a gift, I had a gift in evangelism. I had a gift in teaching, but I also had a youth leader at the church that I was part of in Garden Grove, California, yeah. who came alongside of me and said, Kevin, I see some teaching gifts in you. Could I start to train you? And would you be willing to start on, coming on Sunday mornings and once a month teaching the high school group, mm -hmm. which is like 50 or 60 high school kids. And, but there's three other teachers. And what you'll do is after you're done, they'll evaluate your teaching, give you input and ideas to make it better. And it was like, and so I started to sharpen and develop those gifts when I was about 17 years mm -hmm. old. It's like, man, that helped me. The input of the, even though, even though the other guys were all college age and I was actually still in high school and they were vicious. They were like, man, you blew it here. You should have said this. And yeah. they, so they helped in the not, the, not the most gentle way, <laughs> but it still, it still developed me as a teacher and all it right. made me prepare in advance in a better way. And you'd never come into that thing unprepared because they would smell it and they'd go out and be like blood I in the water. I think you're uniquely and, like developed for that though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think I, you I received did, that stuff well. Yeah. And when, and when they were jerks, I told them so even yeah. though they were older. So, <laughs> but, but, um, but, but so you can develop the gifts. So, you know, you discern the gifts, you do a test to find out the gifts are you work at developing the gifts mm -hmm. and and then you find out ways that those gifts fit in the life of the church but also in your home in the community uh you know the spiritual gift of, of, of evangelism or outreach is one that's primarily used in the world because mm -hmm. most people in the church are believers although a lot aren't and we see yeah. people come to jesus regularly at shoreline yeah, yeah so there's people who are coming that aren't yet so i exercise that gift in the church but i also exercise it in the world yeah yeah, yeah and i i just going back to to our spiritual gifts test that we've actually developed yeah. here and uh something that i in in a lot of these like even even like the personality trait uh tests and stuff the hardest part for me is is going with going to answer the questions mm -hmm. with humility but also like honesty yeah. and like doing, yeah. and i love um this is just an anecdotal com comment about our, our test is I love a lot of the questions are, are, uh, framed in a way that's like, uh, you know, other people come to you for, you yeah. know, yeah. prayer requests. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is not like me at all. This is, you yeah. know, or it true for me or not true for me at all, yeah. you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. And those, I really appreciate the way that our, our, um, yeah. spiritual gifts assessment is, yeah. is laid out because that helps me mm -hmm. get like a perspective. Yeah. And I think it makes, it makes it easier for me to come in it with honesty and then mm -hmm. therefore obviously yeah. accuracy yeah. In, yeah. in the end. And so, um, that's just an, anecdotal thing that I've, I've experienced with our, our, yeah. our and, and for people who are listening, who've never done our spiritual gifts test, they can contact the church and they yeah. can do that. But what, what it does is it's, it's a question and it'll say, it'll say never true of me, you know, sometimes true of me, mm -hmm. you know, occasionally true of me, often true of me, yeah. always true of me. Yeah. So it, yeah. So it could be somebody who says, you know, when, when people have questions about the Bible or try to figure out solutions to life situations, they often come to me and ask me what I think the Bible yeah. says about it. It's like, oh, then they're saying, you seem to have a kind of a teaching yeah. bent. Or you know, when people need prayer, they come to me. Right. And you go, that's never true of me. Nobody comes to you. If they oh, often true of me, well, that's probably an indicator that you have that gift. Yeah. And so, yeah, that we, you know, we designed that, get that spiritual gifts test here at Shoreline using some existing stuff, but really trying to have questions that were, are based around how I'm living, how I'd like to live, how other people perceive I live, yeah. what I believe the Bible teaches about how I should live. Yeah. And those things together kind of come together and give a composite picture. Yeah. yeah. It's very helpful. It's, yeah. it's helpful. So, side it. thing here, yeah. just because yeah. we're talking about it, tell people how to find that if they're, if they're wondering. Uh, so 
It's on the website. It's I know on the website. I know okay. it's on the website. Yeah. Here we can even look. Look, okay. I have a computer in front of me. You look it up. It's on and, the website. Yeah. I just wanted you guys to mention yeah. the website. No, it's it's on and, the website. And I'd and you, say if it, if anybody's watching or listening and they're like, I can't find it, just call the church. Yeah. And ask for uh, call the church and ask for Sherry Harney because Sherry actually yeah. uh, oversees. As a matter of fact, this Sunday this Sunday uh, that this message is communicated right after that is a spiritual gifts right. class and a chance to do that assessment yeah. tool. And but if somebody's listening to this down the road, uh, you can contact the church anytime or go on the website. And the other thing is, if you do the test and then you want to meet with someone mm-hmm. and have them walk through the results, and if it's like, well, here's a couple areas that you know that are really strong for you, and you're like, well, I want to know, how can I develop those areas? And um, are there ways at Shoreline that I can engage with those areas? Yeah. We'll have someone meet with you and walk you through that process. And that's really a valuable process. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so if, uh, on the website, you can just go and take the, the test. Yeah. So yeah. the unique thing about the Sunday is that the, there's the the um, the class that, yes, that Sherry teaching te- before yeah, the, that, that before is teaching. So that's, yeah. that's a really cool opportunity, I think, for a lot of people mm-hmm. who don't really who, you know, kind of want to know more about what the Bible says about them. And there's a, it's a different, not even, it's even different than what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, so it's, it's valuable. I, I, yeah. And Sherry does a great job. Um, I lost my questions. Here we are. Um, so something that, wait, you have questions. I have questions. I've, I have Kevin, (laughs) I have come with an agenda. Um, (laughs) no, I, something else that we, you know, kind of briefly touched on earlier was just how, um, your spiritual gifts as a as a Christian, when you receive your gifts, there is this kind of uh, partnership, this mm-hmm. this immediate connection to service mm-hmm. and serving mm-hmm. in the church. And yeah. so, um, I'm I'm kind of just wondering why it's important for Christians mm-hmm. to understand yeah. why it's why it's important that these things are connected. Yeah. They're yeah. Yeah. they're married together. Yeah, when you read those key passages that we listed earlier, um, you find out that the gifts are given for mutual edification, mm-hmm. meaning for the good of the whole body. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the gifts aren't so look look what I can do. They're not for self glorification. They're they're not for just for me, uh, but they're for the good of the church, mm-hmm. and in some ways the good of the world. Because the healthier the church is, I believe, the more it impacts the world in, right. in positive ways. But but really, it's. Um, when the gifts are being exercised, when you're discovering your gift, when you're growing your gift, you might use it in your home, you might use it in your neighborhood, you might use it in different places, mm-hmm. but a lot of these gifts are going to be used in the life of the church to make the church healthy. And these become all the different ingredients that come together to kind of you know get baked into making a healthy church. Mm-hmm. And so... Uh, you know, so some people serve through intercessory prayer and some people serve through teaching and some people serve through compassion and some people uh, serve through one, one of the spiritual gifts is a gift of, of administration, which is like organization. There's people that keep the church running because they they're just great organizers yeah. of things. Uh, there's a spiritual gift called discernment, which is an interesting gift. It's yeah. where a person can sort of know and discern if something that's going on is is from God, mm-hmm. is kind of from human origin or is from Satan mm-hmm. and it's a, it's a spiritual battle thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, people that have that gift, they can be in a situation, they can go, there's something wrong here. Or they can see, boy, that, that person is really, you know, is really honoring Jesus. And they just kind of, and you say, well, how do you know that? They just, it's a discernment gift mm-hmm. that the Spirit's given. And, uh, and I've known, I, I know people that have that gifting. And I, I don't have that gifting. I can't kind of look at a person and know. I can over yeah. time study and learn. And figure stuff out. Yeah. But people with this gift can walk into a situation and say, "Be very careful right here." Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, what? Why? And I, with those people, with the people that have that gifting, I don't really even ask them. Wait, why do you say that? I, I've got a point where I trust them because I know that they know. Mm-hmm. I know that it's the Spirit working. Yeah. And so that they bring a real value. But in the church, as a pastor, having a few people around me who have discernment gifts is really valuable. It's huge for me. Yeah. In yeah, music, yeah. I mean, when when we have a platform, yeah. You know, and and I, I talk about that as much as I can with my team yep. and uh, my, my staff team, but yep. also our volunteer teams, like uh, probably a, hu- a huge portion of my job mm-hmm. is what I call protecting the platform yep. and making sure that we are, um, that we have healthy believers that are on this platform and that they, they know what we're singing. They know yeah. that what we're preaching from this yeah. platform and, uh, they come with the right, with the right heart, right, right. heart. Yeah. And, and it's very easy to see how, yeah. you know, people can be naturally talented yeah. and capable. And, yeah. and so it's, 
for me, that's that's a very valuable yeah. um, tool to have around me with mm-hmm. with other yeah. team members and and developing that in myself. But it's it's a huge tool, and I think yeah. it's um, it's a unique one. I think, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and 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 you, um, what you do is you, the worship leading is very important. But you're right. Even before that, if someone comes into the church and their their motives are self glorification, mm-hmm. I want to be on the stage so I can show off. I want to show people what a great singer I am. There's places for that in a concert hall. There's places for yeah, that, and yeah. you know, in different in in uh, different places. But in the church, where there the focal point is supposed to be Jesus, mm-hmm. right? And if somebody says, I want the focal point to be me, and sometimes you can't tell that overtly, but but if you ask somebody with yeah. discernment, they're going to go, boy, be very careful. This person's motives are not yeah. the right motives. They don't align with what God wants for our church. Yeah. And that's, those kind of people bring a great wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very valuable in, in looking at ministry and people wanting to serve. It's, mm-hmm. it's a very valuable. So I, something that, that you made me think of was, was, um, you know, I think, I think again, that I don't think that's unique to the Western world, but mm-hmm. there is this, you know, individualistic culture that we mm-hmm. live in. And so is it, can, can Christians really, you know, function like a healthy body? Like we've mm-hmm. been talking about the body of Christ, yeah. um, with that kind of mentality constantly bombarding yeah. the church yeah. and bombarding yeah. us as yeah. just as people yeah. living in the world, you know? Yeah. That's a great question. And it's, it's hard. Yeah. I think I think the more individualistic a culture is, mm-hmm. and the longer we've lived in that and breathed the air of it, mm-hmm. uh, the more challenging it is to really be bound to other people. Mm-hmm. Because like some some of the things that show up in those the four passages we mentioned earlier, um, in First Corinthians twelve, uh, the Apostle Paul writes, and this is inspired by the Holy Spirit. You know, if one member suffers, all suffer together. Mm-hmm. If one member rejoices, all rejoice together. It's like man, you're bound together in suffering. You're bound together in rejoicing. We don't do bound together great mm-hmm. in our culture. It's like, as a matter of fact, in some cases, some people will be like, well, if you're suffering, I'll hang out with you and help you. If you're rejoicing and things are going great, well, almost this kind of resentment. Well, isn't that for your nice little life that everything works yeah. out for you? Yeah. And yet in the church, we're told that we sorrow together and we rejoice together. We're bound together. And it's, it's a challenge, I, I think, as a pastor trying to help people understand in a very individualistic culture that you were describing that... Once you become a Christian, you're part of a family, you're part mm-hmm. of a body. And the Apostle Paul really unpacks that and spells it out. He talks about, you know, the body has many parts, but they form one body, so yeah. it is with Christ. He uses examples of ears and eyes and how they mm-hmm. work. And we can't, you know, the whole body can't be one part of the body. It's all these multiple parts. They all matter. Yeah. He's trying to convince people every single person matters. What someone brings is valuable. That we need all the ingredients for this, for this thing to to function for this thing to work. And so uh, I, I would say it is a distinct challenge in American culture to convince people that we belong to each other and mm-hmm. we need each other. Uh, when a lot of their life they've been taught and still are getting the flood of information that says it's more about you, it's about you, protect you and your immediate circle of people. But this idea that I become part of this church and wait, all these people are part of my family and they belong to me, but that's that's a challenge. And I think for many people, uh, they push away from that. They mm-hmm. try to, and some people are just like, yeah, that's not part of the Christian life that I'm going to buy into. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It makes me think about kind of like, you know, again, the, the, the big C church, um, the global church mm-hmm. and, and it, it, I, I just, I, I get this, this thing in, in my heart and, and where I'm just feeling like, man, it's such a challenging thing for like, you know, thinking about, um, you know, denominations and different mm-hmm. belief, uh, structures around certain things. I think there's a discussion about like the pillars of faith and really mm-hmm. what makes a Christian mm-hmm. faith, a Christian faith, mm-hmm. but, but different beliefs that we, you know, maybe disagree, agree on or, or, um, just topics of theology that we maybe disagree on with other churches. Is there really a room for, you know, us to be working together to, mm-hmm. to fit into one body yeah. with a, so much disagreement? I, I don't know. I, yeah. it's just, yeah. no, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. And I think, uh, yet yes and no. Um, the yes would be when, when, Groups of people are truly biblically like-minded. Mm-hmm. Um, we look at that at Shoreline. We have part, different kinds of partnerships with different ministries. Yeah. Uh, we have ministries we support, but we also look and say, are the core beliefs aligned? Right. 
And so if a group says, well, you know, they say, you know, we're very religious and we, we think a lot of Jesus, but we don't think he's actually the savior. Right. Um, you know, we believe in a That's... God, but we don't believe in one God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah. As Christians, we're, we're Trinitarian Christians, which is the biblical vision of, of, of that God reveals himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. uh, you know, one one in being, but three distinct persons. And that's a complex thing, but that's, that's you read through the scriptures, it's there. Yeah. And so there's some core things that we have to rally around. We'll be kind to people, we'll love people from any walk of life. Mm-hmm. Uh, anybody can walk into Shoreline and, and come to worship and be and warmly loved and welcomed wherever they at, no matter, no matter what they believe, no matter how they live. Um, now, are they going to be given a role teaching in the church? Actually, before someone can even teach in the church, they have to become a member. To become a member, you have to ascribe to the core beliefs of our mm-hmm. faith. And we believe that they're the historical Orthodox Christian beliefs of faith. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, th- when, when there's that alignment, we can and should part together as much as we right. can. Uh, but when there's when there's a rift there and, and there's not agreement on those core things, then, then you look and say, we can love people, we can care about them, but are we going to be in a close, bound together partnership? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, now, can, can, can we partner in, um, you know, raising money to to, uh, to fight against injustice? I'd say if, if it's a loose partnership, if a group said, hey, there's 10 groups going down to the beach and we're along the coastal area, they're going to clean up the beach and we're going to try to make that, you know, to care for this beautiful world that our God has made. Mm-hmm. And, and the Bible is clear that God is creator, and so he's made everything we should care, and that we're called to be stewards of creation. Yeah. Can we go and, and you know clean up trash with other people of different backgrounds and different beliefs? Yeah, that's not a problem at all. Yeah. But are you know, are we gonna put on a conference at our church, you know, trying to teach about you know, about prayer and say, okay, we're gonna have somebody get up on the platform and you talk about guarding the platform, right? Yeah. And someone's gonna get up there and gonna go, <clears throat> well, we disagree with everything that they've just said. We actually think that um that there isn't really a a personal God out there and that, that God doesn't hear you. So you shouldn't really pray to God, but you should uh, hum and chant. And uh, you go, well, that's a, enough of a difference for us to say, <laughs> we're not going it, to, it's just strategically, yeah, yeah. it doesn't make sense to bring those things together. Cause then we're going to just be battling against yeah. each other. So, so, so tying that into spiritual gifts is that mm-hmm. is, is there a, a belief system around spiritual gifting um, that we would be, that we should be concerned about. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I, I know that there's a lot, there's a lot of discussion around this. I know there's a lot of discussion that we may or may not have time to even get into. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I, yeah, I, as a, as a Christian, I want to know, like, you know, how, how do I, how do I, um, you know, sift through that? Because mm-hmm. I mean, we just recently had a discuss, uh, discussion a little bit on the podcast, but you preached about, you know, um, or we're looking at ahead, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the beware, you know, mm-hmm. what to be aware of. And, and yeah. so I'm just, that to me is something yeah, that the I last, think the last, the last, the last chapter Romans. in Romans. Yeah. 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 So, and it's a really unique mm-hmm. little section Yeah. and, and I, it just makes me think with spiritual gifting, mm-hmm. is there something that we need to be careful of? Is there yeah. something? I, I, yeah. Yeah. I would say we should be careful of the things that the Bible warns us to be careful of. Okay. So when you get into first Corinthians, uh, 14 particularly. 1 Corinthians 12 is all about spiritual gifts. And it's funny, people say, well, then 1 Corinthians 13 is that, you know, that passage used for wedding is all about love. Right. And it is, but it's really about love that guides the spiritual gifts. Mm-hmm. And remember, that's 1 Corinthians 13 is where it says, if I speak with the tongues and minds of an angels, but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Yeah. If I do, the, if I know all mysteries and all knowledge, but don't have love. And it's basically saying, if you have the spiritual gifts without love, then you really aren't using them in an effective way. So, right. so, and, and it, it, it works for romantic love for weddings. Yeah, yeah. And so that's okay. <laughs> um, but uh, love is patient. That's love permission. is kind. Those <laughs> things work. That's permission but, for all those the, passages out the, there. But the context that first Corinthians sits in, uh, and listen to this, this is, this is dynamic. Try to get this. First Corinthians 13 mm-hmm. sits directly between first Corinthians 12 and first Corinthians 14. How? Are you How? It? It, it just does. <laughs> it's just there. It sits right in the Bible. And, uh, and so, and so first Corinthians 12 is all about the spiritual gifts. And first Corinthians 14 is all about how to use the spiritual gifts and warnings about mm-hmm. misusing them. And then first Corinthians 13 is just oddly placed there about romantic love. Mm-hmm. No, it's about, it's about, <laughs> it's, it's about love yeah. and the spiritual gifts, but you can have a secondary use of that about how this kind of love that we live out as Christians Mm-hmm. Is patient. It is kind. It doesn't it doesn't envy. So you could that works. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and I've used that in weddings, and it's and yeah, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but 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 here's the point: when you get to First Corinthians 14, uh, what you discover is that there's context in the church where people mm-hmm. are misusing the gifts. And so and this this comes up in First Corinthians 13 also, where there's certain gifts where some people will say, "You have to have this gift." 
everyone should have this gift. It's it's not it's not a menu of which God chooses which gift you're going to have, mm-hmm. but every single Christian should have this gift. And if you don't, you're not very spiritual. And if you do have this gift, you're more spiritual. Yeah. And 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 really, what Paul is saying is, he, he said he actually asked the question, you know, do do all prophesy? Do all do this? Do all do this? And 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 built into the Greek uh, language at that point is, do all do this? It's built in no. Do all do this? No. Do all have this gift? No. Do all have this gift? No. And what he's saying is. Everyone doesn't have all the same gifts. So anytime you're in a context where, and I'm being a little cryptic because I don't want to beat up on any churches, yeah, and, yeah. But, and I, I, believe, I believe that there's people from different backgrounds that really love Jesus, believe the Bible, but they see this differently than I do. Yeah, yeah. But um, if, you, if you say, well, are there are warnings about the spiritual gifts, one of the big warnings is do not impose any particular gift on everybody. Mm-hmm. Don't treat people like if you have this certain gift, you're better or more spiritual. Mm-hmm. And... The use of the gifts should come under the wisdom of the body. Mm-hmm. And so if somebody uses a gift and other people have a sense they're not using it correctly or they're using it inappropriately, um, if you had somebody who was on the stage using uh, using gifts in worship to encourage and to exhort, but they all of a sudden are going to go off the rails and they start doing the, giving their little speeches between songs mm-hmm. on their own, they say, you know, Cole, step aside from it. I, I have a, you know, something yeah. from the Lord I want to do. And, they, and you go, okay, is that is that from the Lord? And if it is, let's make room for it. But if it's not, then we need to pull back on that. There's mm-hmm. this discernment that goes yeah. along with it. Yeah. And so um, whenever someone's imposing a certain gift, whenever someone says you're more spiritual if you have a certain gift, mm-hmm. be careful. Yeah. Uh, whenever somebody says everyone ought to have the same gift, be careful. Yeah. Uh, and, and when gifts are running amok, if you will, yeah. I like to use the term running amok. That's fun. But if, if, if the gifts <laughs> are just, just kind of like, uh, yeah. and, and, and if you say, if somebody were to to come into our church and they watch what was happening and they, and they, they said, man, you've gone out of your minds, which is kind of what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14. He says, yeah. people are going to think you're crazy. Uh, be careful, right? Mm-hmm. And so there are warnings. And I, yeah. so I would say, go. I'm not going to give Kevin's warnings. I would say, go to 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14, 14 mm-hmm. particularly, and the other, the other passages about the spiritual gifts and see the warnings that the Bible gives us about the right. use of the gifts because God yeah. knows the best warnings to give us there. Right. Yeah, yeah that's, that's helpful because I, I, I get a need to be cryptic and to do this in love mm-hmm. um, but it's helpful to just even i mean even given the context of uh 12 13 14 yeah. in corinthians it's 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 uh it's insightful and it makes you it, want to go back and read them again doesn't it sure it? does yeah because i've also because that was my goal <laughs> that was my intention Cole. oh That's good good good, good. <laughs> so yeah. uh something that you know we were talking about a little bit before is the the unity of the body with, yeah. through spiritual gifts as yeah. well um I, again, I don't, we don't, we were making jokes earlier about, you know, back at like mid COVID, yeah. we don't really know where we're at with COVID. So yeah. I just, I'm thinking now, how do we, how do we exercise these mm-hmm. spiritual gifts? Yeah. How, how do we, uh, how do we seek out the ability to exercise these spiritual gifts yeah. and to be in unity as mm-hmm. a body yeah. Yeah. in times like this? Like yeah. what? Yeah. And, and, and the, the, uh, this, uh, second week of the, I will series is I will serve. Mm-hmm. And every Christian is called to serve, uh, as, as Christians, we are to have a humility to find ways to serve. And some of that's just loving and serving and helping wherever you can. But, but part in a season like this, you have to be more creative. You have to be more prayerful and say, Lord, how do mm-hmm. I use my gift? Now, if somebody has, say somebody has the gift of, of helps and actually there's actually a spiritual gift of helps mm-hmm. where they're really good at helping with things. Mm-hmm. It's like, and, and they're the kind of people that are like, what needs to be done? I'm there. They sign up. They love it. They find joy in it. They don't need to, they, if you put a spotlight on them, they'd probably wither. They don't want to, yeah. don't, you know, just <laughs> let me, just let me do my part. You know, yeah. kind of behind the scenes. Uh, and so if, you know, if those are people who help set up and tear down at a church plant and all of a sudden you, I got, I've got a, a friend of mine who's actually going to be preaching uh, in this, in this series, uh, Clint mm-hmm. Dupin, uh, he'll be, he'll be preaching week four in this series. Mm-hmm. He's part of a church plant and they're meeting in a school and in the Bay area. Yeah. And, and now they're not meeting in a school. They're yeah. not meeting anywhere because they have yeah. nowhere to meet and they haven't met and they don't have an outdoor courtyard like we have. They don't have really any options. Right, right. And so, uh, but there's probably people in that church that would, you know, in a, in a church plant and you know, because you helped us yeah. as we launched in the Pacific Grove, there's a lot of setup. There's a lot of tear down and you want some people with the gift of helps. Oh, it's, uh, they, they just love to help out. It's and amazing. Just, do those things right, and yeah. that's and that's a needed gift. Mm-hmm. That's a, a power, a spirit breathed power for those mm-hmm. people, and we need people like that. Well, now if they go, okay, I've been doing that for the last couple of years in this in this setup and teardown, and now that's not happening, so I can't use that gift. Well, no. Then you look and go, okay, where are other places that 
that where there's help needed and where I can pray, say, Lord, is that a place you want me to use my gifting mm -hmm. for your glory? And find those places. Yeah. And it could be in the church, right? You know, it could be in the church as it starts to open up again. It can be in your home, in your neighborhood. You can use those gifts in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I would say to anybody, if they, if you know your spiritual gifting, if you don't know your spiritual gifting, go online at Shoreline at Shoreline's website and take the spiritual gifts test. And I'd encourage you to check the box or, or click the box that says, I want to meet and talk with someone about this. So you can have yeah. a one-on-one -on -one with someone. But, but then also... If you say, I can't use my gift the way I normally was before because I had a set role in the church right. and I can't, we can't be doing that right now, uh, to really pray and say, are there other ways I can do a similar kind of ministry using that gift in a way that would honor Jesus, mm -hmm. strengthen the church and bless people around yeah. me and go for it. Yeah. And I see, because when you were saying that, when you're giving the example of, of someone who's part of a, a set up and tear down mm -hmm. um, team or situation with a, with a church, and I, I immediately thought of... Uh, our food pantry mm -hmm. and where, where it's not in any way, mm -hmm. I would say similar as far as like the actions that you're taking, or maybe mm -hmm. even like, like for us here at Shoreline right now with our courtyard setup, our setup and teardown is mostly our production team. It's mm -hmm. mostly, um, you know, those, the, the techie forward guys, because they, they know what has to know, be done. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but, but we also have, we have people on our setup and teardown team that aren't, that aren't there mm -hmm. running cameras. They're mm -hmm. not there, you know, uh, uh, you know, plugging in speakers, they're that putting, kind of thing. In, putting in squares for oh, chairs to go on. Yeah, and, yeah. And so, but I think about those kind of people, man, like they could be helping organize like our, the food pantry. Yeah. They could, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're really like, how can I help? Uh, yeah. it doesn't have to be in a certain department or yeah. a certain, you know, yeah. bent towards them. And it's, yeah. I think it's, it really is saying we got to think outside the box a little yeah. bit here. Well, and, and so one of our biggest ministries happening right now in terms of our community is yeah. the food pantry yeah, because absolutely. there's so many needs. Yeah. And we got the numbers at our board meeting uh, this, oh, this last week. And yeah. it's, it's, you know, we were serving, you know, three or 400. Uh, now we're, we're in, we're in the plus, I think we just had a month where it was plus 3000 or it might've been yeah. plus 4,000 people. It's staggering. And here's the thing about the, the about the, the, uh, the food pantry ministry. We need people with a spiritual gifting of compassion that'll talk with people, mm -hmm. that'll encourage people. We need people with a spiritual gift of administration because there's a lot of organization. We have people that are driving to pick up the food. We're yeah. picking up the food from 20 different locations. Mm -hmm. We, to get enough food to do what we're doing. Right. We have our own people bring stuff, but that's not enough. We're going to like 20 different locations. So there may be people listening right now that, I mean, they're planning schedules and where are we going, who's going where. People with the gift of helps that can come in and organize the food. Or even somebody might say, I, I can go three days a week and drive and pick food up and bring it yeah. to the church. Great. We could use you right now. Seriously, we could. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you've got the gift of helps. You've got the gift of compassion. We offer prayer to every person who comes. Mm -hmm. And about about sixty percent of the people say, "I'd love to be prayed for." Yeah, the people have the gift of intercessory prayer; they could get involved in that. So now, now you've got mm -hmm. now you've got administration for organizing. You've got intercession for praying. You've got uh, helps for organizing, and you know. So there's multiple gifts being used in that food pantry. And so yeah. there's a lot of people at Shoreline that might say, "Boy, right now I can't help out the way I'd like to," and we could say, "Hey, no, actually, there's places you know, call yeah. the church." Um, we do the food pantry on Tuesdays and Thursdays mm -hmm. from like 11 to two o'clock, 11 to three o'clock. And then on Wednesdays, people come and bring food and drop it off here. And we organize that. Yeah. And so if somebody's listening to this going, man, I'd love to be on the prayer team and yeah. pray with people who come. And these are people who are in a time of need and they, and they don't just ask for prayer for it because they're hungry. They say, I have a spouse who's very sick right now. I've got a child who has cancer. I mean, they share deep prayer yeah, needs absolutely. and our yeah. prayer team really has great ministry to them mm -hmm. because we want to give out food, but we also want to share the love of Jesus yeah. with anybody who's willing to talk about him and receive prayer and encouragement yeah. and this this is a, a stat from this last week yeah. uh 721 people in some way were yeah. were blessed by the food pantry that's just in, one, in one week in one week yeah yeah that's incredible yeah which is close to three thousand in the course of a month yeah, yeah that's, it's yeah. that's it's incredible so there's there's definitely and so I, that's what has made me think of like man there's there's ways there are ways that we can we can help yeah. people there are ways that we can serve there are ways we can exercise our gifts I, yeah. You know, it's just been, it, I, I, I also empathize. It has been a challenge mm -hmm. in this season. I, I, I think of friends that I have, you know, that, uh, are in churches around here, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that don't have a courtyard like we yeah. do. And they're still, even though they're able to, we're allowed to be meeting outside, they can't because they, they don't have a spot. They don't have a space. And they call some of the parks, the parks say, no, we can't do that yeah. yet. And they're just stuck. It's, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. It's tough. So I definitely, um, I can empathize with like that struggle and feeling like there isn't a place for me right yeah. now, but I guess our encouragement 
if you think outside the box mm -hmm. and really reach out to the church and say, I want to help, but I'm, mm -hmm. I just feel like I can't, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm willing to bet that the church is going to find a place yep. and we're going to figure out a way that you can, Do all that you can, can serve. That's, yeah. that's safe. That's, mm -hmm. you know, um, following the guidelines. I mean, I know that's a big thing for a lot of people right now. So, um, and that's a big thing for shoreline. We oh, really, huge, yeah. with our food pantry, we do all the distancing, we follow the protocols yeah. and by God's grace, uh, we've been spared from, you know, any outbreaks and that kind of stuff, but we also have been very careful to follow those yeah. guidelines. Yeah. So, uh, just kind of thinking about, you know, I, I'm, I'm wanting shoreliners and maybe even others who are, who are, tuning into this podcast mm -hmm. to maybe get to know you a little more mm -hmm. and just kind of to close with this. I know we, we talked about your spiritual gifts of, mm -hmm. of evangelism, mm -hmm. but um, is there more that you can share about that and just your spiritual gifts, you know, when you discovered them, yeah. what, what steps you took to hone them mm -hmm. um, and to, to exercise your gifting? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I think that people knowing your story and knowing how, how you came to, to understand your gifting and then how to uh, use your gifting in yeah. such a powerful way. I think that's encouraging. Mm -hmm. I think it's also, it gives people thinking about um, what's, what's my next yeah. step, yeah. especially people who are yeah. taking this test, yeah. you know, and, and just now finding out like, Oh, mm -hmm. that's my spiritual gift. Yeah. And to maybe help them think critically about what's my next step. Yeah. So uh, like I said before, my, my two strongest gifts are evangelism and uh, teaching. Mm -hmm. And then my next strongest gift is leadership. Mm -hmm. And those were things I didn't take a spiritual gift for years after I became a Christian. Yeah. Uh, I didn't grow up Me in the neither. church. I didn't, yeah, yeah, I didn't grow up in the church, and so I didn't know about any of this kind of stuff. But you know, the day I became a Christian, I started telling other people in my life about Jesus mm -hmm. and my family and friends. And people either kind of became Christians or kind of got tired of me talking about yeah. it. And I and I, you know, I've written books called Organic uh, Organic Outreach. I wasn't very organic. I was just like in your face. <laughs> you really need to. This Jesus is great. Yeah. You should accept him too right now. Do you want to? Yeah. And it's like, what's your favorite brand of megaphone? <laughs> exactly. No, I didn't know, didn't have a megaphone, but uh, but I got a big mouth, yeah. and so uh, I didn't really need one. Uh, and so, and so I started sharing my faith, uh, early on, yeah. um, pretty quick within that, within about a year and a half the youth leader, uh, talked to me about doing some teaching. Mm -hmm. And so I actually got to be a part of this group of, of the other people were college students and just post-college. And I was, uh, I was a senior in high school, and, but I got a chance to start using my gifts, start developing those gifts, having other people give me input on them yep. and, uh, and learn how to sharpen those gifts. And then also I was asked to be in leadership and a campus leadership as a volunteer, uh, with the high school ministry in kind of the coastal Orange County area. Cool. And so all three, you know, so evangelism and teaching and uh, and leadership, all of those I got to start using. Uh, and it was kind of funny. I probably, within about a year of being a Christian, I was probably volunteering about 20 hours a week at, yeah. at the church. And I thought that was like a normal deal. I just thought that's what you do. You're a Christian. Yeah. You just, you serve, you know. And, uh, and, I, and I think it actually should be normal. I think every Christian will find greater joy and greater satisfaction and be closer to Jesus mm -hmm. if they find a place to serve. And, uh, and often that's going to be in the church, but it might be in a great community group. It might be in your neighborhood, but a place where God is using you mm -hmm. to be a blessing to others. And so, so for me, later on, I took a spiritual gifts test and it, it affirmed what I, what I kind of was already living, but didn't have really names for. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, I... Yeah, I just thought I just like to talk about Jesus and I tell people about him and I do it pretty and, and, and pretty early on. I started to get a lot less in your face and just more yeah. natural and have conversations. Uh, and and so so then for me, you know, the development of, of developing those gifts, I, I was actively involved in a local church where they leveraged those gifts and let me do things to learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I had a lot of bumps along the way and a lot of times where I'd be using my gifts. And I had one point where I got fired uh, from a volunteer position. I got sat down by uh a guy named Larry who had this, this uh, big giant. He was a he was a very pale redheaded guy with a giant afro. But this was a sweet. This, it was the time, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, and and, and I, I remember sitting there, sitting there by the the Good Shepherd statue at this church that I went to in yeah. Garden Grove. And and the wind was kind of blowing, and his afro was like slowly moving in the wind. Wow, and it, that was the Holy Spirit and, moving and, around. Exactly, actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was like Larry asked me to meet one on one. This is gonna be incredible. He's gonna like thank me for all my. Because I'm volunteering like 20 hours a week. He's going to thank yeah. you for my great volunteer worker. He's going to give me like a, a challenge to some new ministry. And yeah. I want to serve the Lord. And he sits down and he says, you're fired. <laughs> and he says, he basically says, hey, you're arrogant. You're, you're prideful. Your attitude's wrong. You talk about, you know, attitude, yeah. the heart, right? He yeah. says, your heart's wrong. 
And so you can't volunteer anymore. <laughs> it's like, and as he was telling me this, I got really mad because um, you know that was one of my deals. And uh, and <laughs> I started thinking, deals. I started thinking, you know, you're the most arrogant guy I know. If you want to talk about arrogant, you should look at yourself. I didn't say it, but I started yeah. thinking, look at your afro. Exactly. <laughs> think about you, you know. And I wanted to say, what about you? And I felt like the Holy Spirit just said, keep your mouth closed. He's absolutely right. I'll deal with him. He's dealing with you. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I sat there with my mouth shut, and I and I took it. And I said, what do I need to do and help me learn? And in about four or five months, they, they gave me permission to volunteer 20 hours of my time every week again. <laughs> and, uh, and I was thrilled to do it. Yeah. But, um, but, but that was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Yeah. Is that somebody, and, and, and he was right. I was getting, you know, they put me in this role of teaching so early and so young. And I just started thinking way too much of myself. Yeah. And I wasn't thinking about the gifts from God that God gave me. I was thinking about what I could do. And that was very humbling, but it was a good kind of humility. Yeah. And I look back and th that was like a definitive moment in my life. And it's caused me to always kind of keep watching my heart, checking my heart, saying, Lord, keep my heart humble. This is not about me. It's for your glory. Mm -hmm. And um, and so you know, so I've had bumps along the way. And, uh, and I still am always watching to look and say, as I'm doing the work God's called me to do, is it not just doing it, but doing it with the right heart, the yeah. right spirit. And I don't want to be disqualified. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's bad enough to get fired from a paid job. It's really pretty sad to get fired from a volunteer yeah. job, but no, it, that's it good for me. But yeah. that's, that's encouraging to hear. And, and just to see that there's this reality of like, I, I think, I, I think when, when people, I, people will realize like when you take the spiritual gift uh, gifts yeah. test for the first time and the spiritual yeah. gifts assessment, you know, even for someone like me who I, I've, I've been aware of spiritual gifts. Yeah. I've been, I've been loosely, you know, I, I had been loosely aware of my gifting. I mean, I was, I was playing music in the church. Yeah. I, honestly, I started playing in our youth group, sixth grade. Like that was my, my first time really playing in ministry yeah. in, uh, about two thirds of the way through that year, I actually gave my life to Christ. Hmm. So yeah. I was doing, you know, yeah. ministry before I, I was like in it. I was went to a Lutheran school mm -hmm. and, and, uh, but that was a year that really challenged mm -hmm. me. But, uh, uh, I, I think it's encouraging to hear that, like, cause you hear your spiritual gifts and you take mm -hmm. that assessment and you find out your gifting and, and yeah. you get those, like you've been saying, you get, you get those words that kind of help you define like really, Oh, that's what it is. That's yeah. what the, that yeah. feeling is that pull towards this, yeah. you know, it's, you actually have context for it. And, it does feel like it's very empowering. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. very, it's yeah. invigorating. It's empowering. So it's a wonderful uh, thing. Yeah. And it's, and, but how quickly it can be mm -hmm. something that can get to your head yeah. and say, Oh, I'm good at this. And yeah. like, Oh, yeah. you should be, yeah. you know, Hey, I don't know if you know this, but yeah. like, I'm, you know, yeah. and, and, uh, it's, it's a good reminder to, to say, you know, to do all these things in love, yeah. uh, and, and to be, you know, kind and patient and compassion and, and to, I think pursuing those gifts with that mentality is what's really going to help, you know, people who are new to, to, um, their spiritual gifts, like being aware of them and then expressing them and utilizing them for the kingdom. I think that's a helpful thing to be thinking about along that, that journey. So, um, yeah, I appreciate that. I, it's encouraging. Well, and this is interesting as you're talking about yeah. that, Cole. So verse three, which is the first verse yeah. uh, that ties into the sermon for the, uh, for the, uh, this podcast, it says, for the for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Don't be get, don't get arrogant, mm -hmm. but rather think think of yourself with sober judgment. Sober, you just can look and go, how am I doing it? And this is yeah. the, this, and and that that's that perspective, right? And uh, and so, but it's not just it's not just sixteen, seventeen year old kids that can get. Oh, and nope. about things as anybody. And yeah. so it's something I still, I, you know, when I first started using my gifts as a Christian, I was 16 years old. Yeah. Uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm creeping to, I'm 58. <laughs> my, my wife is 60, yeah. but I'm creeping towards 60. I go, okay, 16 and 60. Those are different times in life. Yeah. But, th but those words don't think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment uh -huh. still speak to me today. Yeah. I've got to say, you know, whatever God does through me, it's God doing it through me. Yeah. And I get to be a partner with God, but it's his gifts that he gives to mm -hmm. me. He gets the glory. It's his spirit working in and through me. And I get the joy of being part of the yeah. part of the experience. Yeah. yeah. And the benefit of that scripture for people who who are just getting into, you know, what it means to to express yourself in your spiritual gifting. Um, man, it's such a great thing to to hear and to be warned of, knowing that mm -hmm. it's always been 
a thing that people have dealt yep. with. Yep. And there's a reason it was written in the Bible yep. and yep. into before it becomes an issue for, cause it yeah. can, it doesn't yeah. always obviously, but, but man, to, to be able to hear that mm-hmm. as your first start, I mean, I definitely struggled with that. I, there was definitely yeah. a lack of humility in, in, I didn't want to bring it up. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no. <laughs> but no, but that's been a real yeah. challenge for me, especially, yeah. you know, now that I'm on a different platform than I was in yeah. sixth grade at yeah. a small Lutheran church, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a different world. So yeah. it's, it's always been a great reminder. I, I, yeah, that's I, a perspective we need through our whole lives. It, yeah. yeah. Whether Amen. we're volunteering, whether we're on staff, whether yeah. we're, uh, to keep that right perspective. Yeah. yeah. In your family. I've mm-hmm. been, yep. you know, as a freshly married man, that's a, yeah. that's a, common thing i have to remember and remind myself to be humble and patient and loving and yeah and uh yeah so hey i appreciate this kevin this is this has been uh this has been exciting i think this might be one of our longest podcasts i don't know Uh, maybe the best one ever yes (laughs) no but i really appreciate sitting down and i i think obviously you have a lot to say about this subject because of the way that you've studied this in the past Mm -hmm. uh in your educational pursuits but um, I really appreciate it. this is this is kind of shed a lot of light on yeah. on, you know, this topic of spiritual gifting, but also, mm-hmm. you know, how we can, you know, really look at ourselves yeah. uh, through this process of of knowing our spiritual gifts and then developing them yeah. to edify the church. Yeah. And I, I, it's been it's been helpful. So thank you so much. Yeah, and pleasure. I look forward to yeah. more conversations. Looking forward to it, man. And enjoy, enjoy your conversation uh, next week yeah. with Keith. Yeah. And the next week with our guest pastor, Clint, yeah. Clint Dupin. Yeah. So, so for the people listening, uh, get to hear a couple of new yeah. voices and then I'll be back to do the last two podcasts. Super yeah. excited for it. Thanks, Kevin. You betcha. Whether you're watching this podcast on the YouTube channel or listening on your podcast app, make sure to subscribe to hear our weekly episodes. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week with another one.